Doo -doo -doo -os. Oops. Not quite ready for that yet.
Warp. Oh, I forgot that if I did the transition in theater mode, it doesn't do the stupid animation. That's disappointing. Oh, well. Hello and welcome to another, yet another installment of some sort of talk show. Um, I am Tyler and joining me today is Evenstar. Oh. Yay. Um, as you can tell, I've had my coffee, so somewhere around the 30 minute mark, I'm going to start to lose English and stutter a lot. Keep an eye out on the timer. So last week we did the Cyclops, or at least we tried to do the Cyclops. Um, even did an actual Cyclopes in the sense that he did two, it's the plural. And I did a fragment of one, <laughs> um, which then going through the alphabet, we come to the next creature in the monster manual, the Dark Mantle. Um, for those of you who are not aware, we are doing what I'm calling a road trip through the monster manual, the D&D &D monster manual, um, as published by the Wizards of the Coast, fifth edition. Uh, so a lot of you might be like, but wait, there's like all these other things in there. Yeah, we're not doing like the extra books. And every once in a while, we might forget that there's a beast that's like interesting to do. That's not just like, that's just a dog. Um, but we try. So, so we're doing. And this week, Dark Mantle. Um, as noted, oh wait, I actually have a, I actually have a graphic for this. Hold up. Today's feature. Bam. That's the gross thing that's one depiction of the gross thing that we're doing today um it is also depicted upside down and splatted against the roof as a stalactite um i whenever i look at this image i always think that it's like this huge like real world octopus like it's like the the bulb or I guess the arrowhead in this case is like the size of your head and then it kind of billows out to like your torso and then the tentacles go somewhere down to your like knees like that sort of large mm -hmm. but um, this thing is categorized as small so it's about the size of like a medium sized dog large oh, cat that's <laughs> <laughs> um, well I mean like like a terrier, not like a husky. Like I think a husky is more like on the large side of the small category. Kind of, but yeah. Apparently, this thing is just large enough to fit around, um, like human, elf, and orc heads. Uh, it can't really like encompass more than that. So it's it's that size, which is weird because. <laughs> Mo, you'd imagine that most things in the Underdark, if you don't, if you're not aware of what that is, go Google it. It's a really scary place. Um, would be a little more dangerous than this. I think it's really cute though that um, the fifth edition description adds in that it fills the same ecological niche as bats do in the Overworld. <laughs> so it's just to get rid of insects. <laughs> Eat tons of little bugs. I don't <laughs> No. Well, I think what they mean is that it drops down it's normally it's not going to drop down on a thing larger than its like head, but it'll drop down on like like rats and stuff and crush them and eat them. Um is yeah. my take on that. Cause I think very rarely, unless it's like desperate or starving will it actually be like ooh big thing that has appendages that could beat me while it's on <laughs> while I'm on its head um I'll totally land on that <laughs> it's a weird one uh it made more sense the creature made more sense to me before I read his description and then once I started reading his description I didn't understand it. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. I think it's interesting. I was reading a thing and it was like pointing out that it has like the intelligence of a dog. So it's not like super tactical, but uh, it's smart enough to like know how to like um, to ambush things. But then it's like in reading that it's like, but you don't know dogs though. Like <laughs> dogs are pretty sophisticated, like, uh, I don't know, groups and like hunt in specific ways and much. Uh, and like you said, it, and that like would like, engulf a rat but wouldn't go after a person like they always have these go after people like um unless they were in like a group and i don't see they, they don't really talk about these things being in groups either well kind of they call them i don't know i read one thing that was calling them scourges like that is like the group name hmm. it's kind of cool but in the same way it's weird yeah i think the i think the worm variant of this and i forget what that thing's called it's in, it's in Dark Alliance also, and that thing scares the crap out of me because that's a large creature. Um, in mm. fact, I think we did it on the show, didn't we? The Grick? No. Uh, it's it's like a so when it's on the floor, it just looks like a large worm, but it tends to just kind of like grossly kind of like crawl up cave walls and just kind of sit there like a stalactite and then its attack mechanism is i drop on stuff and hope i hit them <laughs> oh no we're not there yeah that's a piercer uh piercer. very far They're and then dumb. the more scary variant which is like a challenge rating of four or something which is the roper roper i was like lasher no <laughs> what's it called yeah the roper nerds, so, yeah, nerds. these are all these are all cave geometry f mimics um but back to the dark mantle uh it is a challenge rating half it's a half of a challenge rating um so it's not that scary i have never had a game where the dm used it <laughs> It just never existed for me. Um, I think you can make cloaks out of it, but why? <laughs> um, I also saw someone that suggested using their eyes um, as a replacement, like uh, magical item, uh, magical uh, piece for creating darkness spells. Oh, okay. Interesting. But that's a cool I don't know. Bit, I think like a cool little bit of uh lore or not lore but um environment flavor flavor. <laughs> so uh the we're not exactly here to just kind of nerd out about the monster though. We are here because um through the week, sometimes just in the night before uh we went out of our way to actually try to recreate this within our own sort of technique boundaries um, so my method is blender and evens is the digital pen and paper uh sometimes a brush or a charcoal i don't really know what brushes he uses so <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that when we get there but um so today i am up first so we go into the wonderful world of the ones and zeros of Blender. How do I get rid of this dark mantle? Go away. And this one. So this is sped up twice because it was a very long file. And, you know, honestly, it didn't need to be, but I wanted to showcase how long I struggled in one particular section and usually whenever i struggle in blender it's because i had to um i had to interact in some manner with simulation i love it i want to use it more but i hate it because i don't understand often how the results are calculated but we'll get there when we get there So step one, we gotta get the basic shape. It's freaking 
It's a freaking cephalopod looking thing, so we gotta start getting gotta start getting our our, our nice little umbrella <laughs> our umbrella structure down. And I got a little ambitious with the with the spike topper in the base because I do know that there's some instances in which the um, the plane above that I'm putting down. So the idea is to literally just make an umbrella, just have the the skeletal base at the bottom, and then just drop what's going to be a cloth simulation on top of that um, for the mantle portion of it. But the reason why I say risk is because there is an anomaly in the program in which it will, if something's too quote unquote sharp, it will actually just like punch through because it's just like, I don't know how to calculate that very small point. So I'm just going to ignore it until I, I recognize something thicker and then it'll start doing the thing, which is exactly what it did. But, um... then there was kind of this other sort of issue so a lot of the time that i was spending i was kind of just watching youtube videos while that blue bar sort of fills up <laughs> at the very bottom you can see the little blue sort of tag just kind of scrub across the line <sighs> yeah it's uh it's fun when you have a mediocre working pc and you're trying to do heavy duty rendering <laughs> baking and rendering <laughs> especially it, it's even it's even better when you go on youtube when something doesn't go right and you go on youtube for a tutorial or something to be like all right so what can i fix and all these people just you know they're they're loading bars just zip across the line as they're talking and you're just like that makes me feel bad <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of very much sad <laughs> when it is just like when you realize like, oh, I just have crappy technology. Really, is money the only thing that's going to help? So, I mean, you kind of get the idea. And I think, yeah. it, I, I think it looks it looks good. But and if I was a weaker man, I would have just left it at this point or at that point. I don't know where it is at that point there it goes <laughs> um but i keep having this concept that i need to clean that up especially if i'm going to try to like pose some of those tentacles later because if you don't clean up that tablecloth is what i'm going to refer to it as from here on out mm -hmm. um the minute you move one of those one of those one of those tentacle legs uh the entire thing's gonna go crazy and i try my best but we don't really get there in the end. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So, one of the good things though about working with um, 3D sculpture instead of 3D animation is that you can actually choose. You can kind of flip the vase around so that that blemish isn't <laughs> isn't shown to the audience. So it's kind of what I tried to do later. <clears throat> But yeah, I kept getting this thing where like the the tablecloth would kind of flump down onto the skeleton and then just kind of start to suck into the skeleton and I didn't know really what was causing that. So this entire process here is just me um off to the off to the right over there and just sort of like diddling with the little dials and the um amounts and all the other stuff it, it's like it's like trying to do chemistry but being challenged to do it without doing math <laughs> you know it's like so you're just kind of you're just kind of like mixing shit and then putting it aside and just hoping that it'll come out right um yeah i'm just not that experienced yet to know the math that goes along with those numbers so that I know exactly what the values are going to translate to into the into the visual space. Um, 
though. I don't think I ever will, because I rarely have to have to run to cloth simulation. I'm only doing this because I didn't want to like do a. I thought that the the visual would look worse if I were to just do a cone, and then try to sculpt that into like a bag like structure. Um, mm. It probably would have taken me the same amount of time, but this is a function in Blender that I I don't get to use often, so this was kind of an excuse to like. All right, let's dust this off a little bit. Because mm -hmm. um, every once in a while, you know, I whenever I delete that that plane and go up in into the object or into is it add, yeah, up into add mesh, and then I'd have to scroll past the cone, you know, or to just kind of like browse what other options I had to like what could be a better tablecloth. Um, that cone, man, it looks so tempting because that's just that's just what the dark mantle is. If you just kind of hold it by the tip of its head and you just let it dangle, but um, I was adamant, stuck with it. I have a theory that the the tablecloth keeps like flumping down and then sucking into the skeleton because it is just a plane. You know, there's no real thickness to it. Um, there are some people that will add a thickness to their plane just so that there's more geometry mm. to add for this. So it's taking forever right now because I added, um, A, I added a subdivision surface. So that just kind of inherently gives it more uh, faces to work with. And on top of that, it's also subdivided seven times. <laughs> so... Um, or but beneath that it's subdivided seven times so it's seven subdivisions and then it has a subdivision surface further decimating that down so that's just it's, it's a lot of data um, and that's kind of the risk that i run on my computer and what's caused me to crash multiple times in the past especially with hair simulation because again it's just you're adding a lot of data to a scene that your graphics that my graphics card can only handle so much of. So whenever the bloating bar would take exponentially longer, I would get super stressed out. And suddenly the, the YouTube video that I would watch during that waiting period would just sort of fade away into white noise. And I'd just be dead set on the on the loading thing. Just be like, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Because at this point, I don't know if you've realized, but I've been going for about an hour 20 or something at this point, and I haven't saved once. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I hate where this is going. Why do you do that to yourself? <laughs> well, to be fair, once I, once, I, once I mess around with this armature for a little bit, um, it's probably too fast to see, but my cursor does zip up to the file tab real quick and because of the way obs captures um a a window it won't act it's really cool because it won't actually show that drop down thing so all those files so i can have little secret future project files and they're like hidden and kept safe um but yeah it does zip up there because i do I, I am like I've been working on this for an hour and 20 minutes. I need to save, <laughs> especially <laughs> after it, after, especially after it succeeded in not, um, crashing after all those little tablecloth falls. So, I mean, it, you know, it adds a little bit of danger, but it's unnecessary as hell. Um, and so then we come to, um, minor detail, but frustrating moment number two. In which, once I figure out that um, I can rotate this thing if I get rid of the linking bone, um, once I start rotating it around, the closest three bones to the to the epicenter um, just start to roll ever so slightly, and I can't stop that. And I, but I also don't know why they roll. <laughs> There's nothing there that tells them to do it, but they do it. So you see me kind of run through real quick, just kind of resetting their their roll um, ratios. Uh, it doesn't really work out very well. And 
usually the reason why I want um, I want to fix that role is because it affects their X Y coordinates. So when I select a bone, I hit the R button on my keyboard to rotate, and then I hit the X or Y to just like default it to that axis uh, axis, and it won't go anywhere else. Um, it goes in the direction that I imagine it will go instead of like some awkward like diagonal because <laughs> it's axis is off <clears throat> now we get into some posing just so that i can get more of a satisfaction out of my own eyeballs to keep working on this thing now we add some eyeballs so we're getting toward the end here once the eyeballs start coming in we're getting there I'm actually really happy with how this turned out, despite all the all the mess that we just witnessed going through here. Um, once the eyeballs come in, I always get super excited because I'm just like, yes, yeah, this is where it all starts to come together. And I'm really surprised that it sort of came together. <laughs> um, that bit of alchemy that happens in art is really quite lovely. last couple of moments i had a I brain fart a... oh. sorry real quick i had a brain fart here because i haven't had to do this in a long time um this is a thing called um opposite or it's just the the normals are it's what's called normals the blue is supposed to be the exterior and the red is supposed to be an interior um so theoretically everything on the top of this creature is supposed to be blue I didn't mm -hmm. really care that the mesh in between is red at this point because I knew I wasn't going to mess with anything. But it determines that when I use that inflate brush that I'm using right now, that's what determines if it inflates outward or if it depresses inward, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Huh. Yeah, so I had to flip those real quick because the, 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 the normals were what's called flipped. They're just the opposite. Uh, I'm sorry, but I interrupted you for something. <laughs> I I don't know. Damn Damn what I was saying. <laughs> oh, that's what I was saying. Is that I? There's like a difficult part for artists, and it depends on like you know the person. Uh, it changes here and there, but there's like a part where like a lot of people are um are happy once you get to it, like just that like that um. That point where it starts to look the way that you want it to look or looks like the thing like and it's just moving past and then that's a lot of where amateurs give up like myself included um <laughs> i'm just like i'm good it looks like how it should look this gets the idea across uh and then like a lot of professionals know how to push it further into that like into that area of, like refining it to so it's more than just getting the idea it's like you've you're now really making it, but I always think that's kind of a, a neat sort of thing. Oh, sad fish. But I've also heard good arguments about like, uh, really, if you um, teach yourself how to, um, or if you just focus on the first part of getting your idea across, you're actually learning more and being more effective Effective with your time of edu uh, educating yourself on how to do stuff, um, and then just the like that part can go by real relatively quickly in comparison to like the refining details part. The refining details part, where it really starts to become like good professional art, actually just takes a bunch of time, and you're not really like learning too much. You're just refining. And that's what the final render looks like. So this is one of the rare times in which I actually shove in the final render. Um, there are a couple things that I, I, you know, there's always a couple things that I could, I could have done better. I could have done a, I could have done um, suckers or hooks on the bottom edge to kind of give it more of that like. I'm an octo creature. I grab things and crush them in my in my. I don't want to say sack, but that's the word that came through my head. <laughs> um, 
the one the one problem that I had because I was like, oh man, like not only do I get to do cloth simulation, but I also get to do a little bit of practice into the one element of this of Blender that I really do need to like learn and practice, which is lighting my scene. Um, which I did a little bit here, but the problem that I came across with the dark mantle is that they are they are darkness creatures. Um, if the if their already dark environment isn't dark enough, they have an ability to make stuff darker. <laughs> so um, as far as a visual medium goes, it's like the most frustrating thing to do because it's like, well, I could take more detail away, but then what am I presenting? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so it's like I could... Like I could have been like the the least amount of work that I could have done here was have done a smoke simulation and just said, if you squint very hard, you can kind of see the outline of the dark mantle in that cloud. And there wouldn't have been a dark mantle in that cloud. <laughs> but I was just like, nah, that's that's too a that's too meta and b eh. <laughs> at least on my end, I kind of got a little glimpse as I got a little glimpse as to what you did. And um, that's exactly what I did. It's it's more it's more well, yeah, but on your end it's more acceptable because there's there is still more it. there is still more to view. <laughs> Whereas if I were to have done it, it it's just smoke over a monkey head. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so that's my dark mantle. I'm not. I'm still not that happy with the webbing in between, but there's only so much that I can do there, as you saw from the first like 14 minutes of my video. Um, and then, as far as the monkey head goes, it was more of an expression practice, where it was like I was trying to get kind of like a like that um, that unfortunate dude in a horror adventure thing where he's like every like everyone else in the in the adventure party kind of turns around and then they kind of look at the guy and the guy goes like what before like the bug or whatever like makes his upper torso disappear um <laughs> oh you know what i could have done i could have put like the top half of a torch or something in front of the monkey head that would have been cool damn oh well mm. um so yes, that is my that is my attempt at the recreation of the dark mantle. Can I say the most interesting feature on a dark mantle really is like the eyes that are all around the head, the crown of it, which is like I'm glad that you that we can see those in yours. <laughs> I am too. I. Um, I don't know if if it was too fast, but or if it was even noticed at all, but um the the default thing is kind of this matte sort of color um but what i like to do for eyes especially is to kind of go down and give them an emission um ratio mm. so that they actually do kind of glow a little bit it's what i did for the cyclops eye to a certain extent also uh, i don't know why but it's just a it's just a fun thing to do for for eyes. Um, can't get too crazy with it though, unless it calls for it. But if you put too much of a mission in it, then um, you can't get detail in the color. So like, if you have different colors in the eye, um, if you make it too emissive, then it all just sort of blends into whatever the most prominent color is. In the, is what I've experienced in the past. Okay, but. Yeah, uh, that might just because I also have a setting that's not correct, but I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so let us move on. What time is it? 2.38. Yes, let us move on. Let's see what um, more traditional techniques have fulfilled. Shabam! Shabam. Oh, no, wait, that's... <laughs> what the crap? Hold up. Hold up, wait a minute. Some may write. I think that's my, what's it called? That's my um, Cyclops. All right, how about this? Ah, shabam! Yeah, there we go. All right, with <laughs> a little preview. So, as you can kind of see that I did go for the whole like darkness thing. I thought that was kind of cool. And so I made this like dark cloud creeping in. And what's kind of cool, like, 
mechanics wise is that I think like the fact that it makes a dark cloud is something that it doesn't even realize um, what it visually looks like. And, and they kind of talk about how it has vestigial eyes that like can sense light and dark, but it doesn't really sense much more than that or doesn't really see so much. But like its cloud of darkness probably is more of an aura of nullified dark vision because that's really what it does. And since it's supposed to be in the underdark with things that can see dark vision, it just makes it, it's like, I think it thinks that it's in a cloaking device thing, but like to people that actually see and like it, things that actually see outside of caves get to see like the inky blackness that's like, that comes out. It's kind of cool. I have this like idea of like, there's a, uh, I made a dwarf ish kind of thing. Um, that like, their lantern, which I'll end up making uh, a little bit brighter, is, is like getting snuffed out by the darkness as this thing is going to like creep out and like snatch on them. But you can kind of see that it's like, I don't know. It's choppy ish. I switched over, I was trying this time to switch over from. Uh, Autodesk Sketchbook is what I usually use into Procreate. And uh, Adobe Procreate, I mean, it's good. A lot of people use it. I'm just not very familiar with it. So like, I spent like a good like hour and a half altering the brushes just so I can get a brush that I feel comfortable with. And I'm still not very happy with the brush, but it's working. Like, it still feels like my style, kind of. And that like, uh, I don't know, soft pencil, charcoaly kind of mode. But then the other thing that's kind of weird about this, or why I switched over, is because when I was recording things on um, uh, on a sketchbook, like it recorded the negative, like the empty space, like the non canvas area uh, of my iPad, which was really weird. And then anytime I zoomed in, it would record the zooming in, and I didn't really want that. Uh, and on Procreate, it doesn't record that negative space, nor does it record any of the zoom. It is just like the design. So I thought that would be helpful for like ease of exporting things so that I wouldn't have to like touch it up so much in like iMovie and stuff um, or other programs so I can clip off the extra area so that I could easily post it here, but also on my Instagram. When you set out but to it, draw a picture, but end up learning technology, <laughs> learning, learning some uh, so much. stuff. <laughs> and so like, it took a lot of my energy out of me once I get to like this point. I'm like, I'm is a dwarf. It has like bits. Arms are connected. Maybe. What is it wearing? Ah, black. <laughs> something. Do I give it a backpack? Ah, let's screw that. Like, so I'm like, I get kind of done. That's very gorilla. But it's funny. Ratios. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to go for the like grab a dagger, find your hat back, but like, I was lazy. Didn't want to look up a resource. Yeah, at the beginning, I was going to say that you made your dark mantle friggin' huge, and then you're like, it's a dwarf. And I was like, all right, that's better, but that's still a large dark <laughs> That's still, by category categories, that's still a large dark mantle. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's how big they should be. Like, like, whenever I see their picture, it's like, that's kind of how they should be. Like, they should be able to just, like, cat sack a dwarf and maybe, like engulf the head of a human and also have room for its tentacles to be like stay away from my meal <laughs> yeah. this is like this is the be uh the mini boss version it's the biggest one the alpha it's the uh, one that actually has a name instead of just dark mantle number seven six five <laughs> yeah <laughs> right i don't know it's funny i saw somebody came up with like like tiny dark mantles. I forgot what they call, recalled them, but as like, so they could be familiars and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. Like, I mean, if a bat can be a familiar, why wouldn't a dark mantle if they feel the same like niche? Especially if they're not the wild, crazy ones, but like the wild and super... crazy guys. But it's, that's mine. I don't know. Something that was like kind of weird that, too yeah. is that when it exported, its frame rate that it records things at is so much quicker than Sketchbook. So like I had to like I did still have to go into 
uh, iMovie and then slow it down, which made it choppy because it doesn't have like smooth motions of recording. So I need to do more experimenting technology wise. Going <laughs> wise, I had fun with the shadow area. I hated the dwarf, but <laughs> the shadows was fun to play with. So there's two things that I kind of want to just like throw out there real quick, and that's um, despite what I so like like what I said earlier, just kind of doubling down in the sense that if I were to do the same thing in Blender, like you saw that my world environment was already super dark, so that's kind of why I said that if I were to do the same thing, I would be presenting nothing, um, which in and of <laughs> itself is kind of. It would be interesting as an art piece, but for the purpose of why I was doing it, I would be presenting nothing. Um, whereas in a video game, it'd be kind of like, ooh, like, I don't understand. It's just a monkey. And it's like, if you look a little closer, it's like, whoa, there, you know, there it is in the background. Um, whereas it works for yours because you actually do have that contrast of like the world is this, you know, is the parchment paper sort of thing. And then you, you're allowed to kind of bring in this inky darkness and then just kind of make the, the details sort of hidden inside of that dark in, you know, inside of that darkness. So, um, the, the ink cloud, um, darkness, like it works in this medium. <laughs> um, <laughs> I definitely did use, um, even though on my bottom right, you can see that there's like my color swashes. Like I did choose my darkest dark one and then I dropped it down just a little bit more to make the, the background dark. So this is technically four tones in here, plus all the ver variety of like erasing and like going a little bit harder in some areas. All right. But yeah, it would like you would you would definitely you couldn't get away with just like one black. That would no good. Or at least for this. <laughs> and then the other thing, yeah, which like is if, funny. If... Go. Talking about like uh presenting just black. Um I think it's I want to say it's AD and D, but the monster manual for like AD and D, uh it is such a treat when you get to the invisible stalker. I <laughs> love it. It is fucking nothing. Nothing. They have no artwork for it. It's just a blank space where the artwork is supposed to be. <laughs> uh, I bet that was such a great day when they were like pitching it to the team, like, "All right, let's see your invisible stalker art." And they just like, was like, "Oh yeah, that's my favorite one." I spent so long on this and just like slid forward a blank piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, laugh, good laugh. And they're like, "All right, cool." So, what's the next yeah. creature on that list? Well, yeah. <laughs> And then um, the last thing that I wanted to throw out there was that um, the thing that I like most about yours that makes this this throwaway monster like a, like a hundred times more epic is the um, the Lovecraftian sort of angle that it elicits, and I think it's mostly due to the lantern. Like it would just be a normal sort of D and D image without the lantern. But for some reason, because you have the 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 clouds and the the tendr the tendrils trying to like invade and this like this like you know light source that's trying to like hold it back, sort of. It's very it's very Cthulhu, very Sagoth, very you know it's just everything that's in there that's just like I don't understand what's going on and it's going to consume me. Um, right. and that's what I wanted. I wanted him. Like if it, and this was me, and if I were a dwarf that can see in the dark mostly, like that is such a terrifying moment of like, I can't see in the dark, guys. <laughs> I can't see in the dark. <laughs> like, and like even though that the, I mean, the dark mantle is kind of scary, kind of, not that scary when you do, actually deal with it. Uh, like, but the fact that it is, it, the scariest thing really should be the dark all of a sudden there is more dark than dark and then then there's a feeling and then if, even if the dark goes away i'm still in the dark because i'm in the the, the mantle <laughs> like yeah there's a there's a couple things that i want to nerd out about that um a little later but i wanted to go back to when you were saying that there are four shades in your cloud and that it wouldn't really work without if it was just like one or two um i i would i would probably say 
the same sort of thing. I would apply the same thing in mine if I were to try to attempt that same sort of thing. Like, except I wouldn't try to do like a like a black like the world or like a dark like a super dark gray. I'd probably <clears throat> do like a lighter gray, just to try to get some contrast in there. Cause, I mean, I'm again, I I'm a lot happier that I didn't uh, try to attempt that sort of thing, but. Um, if I were prompted to, that's probably how I would try to go about it. Um, so that there would be more, you know, shades and colors and you could still try to see the darker, um, dark mantle underneath all that. So mm -hmm. mine would be more like a smoke screen instead of like a, like this is a part, this is a thing that's a part of the creature. That's kind of what I like about yours is that, um, there's a point, there's a couple points where you kind of don't see the creature anymore and the ink cloud is just sort of a part of it so it's a much larger creature now that takes up an entire quarter of your page <laughs> <sighs> all right so what i wanted to nerd out about is the fact that yes it is um it is a relatively weak creature and so if you are if you've ever played any sort of like tactics games um final fantasy tactics is the main one that I'm kind of drawing from because they take even in the later levels, they bring back a lot of these like quote unquote weaker creatures and they make you go, what the hell? Like, why are these things whooping my butt? Um, so like one of the descriptions in the monster manual is that the dark mandal is often sort of, I don't want to say recruited. They're like tamed by more intelligent creatures. So I could imagine that um, a DM could probably not use this creature as the feature, but sort of as the sort of weapon or tool of another creature. So like an Illithid or like a group of um, dark elves or something. Um, this is the this is the this is the creature that just sort of messes with what the with what your player party is able to do and. Because everything that the Dark Mantle kind of does isn't really that effective. Um, it does have dark... <laughs> like, the, the, the strongest thing it has is, is what you were saying earlier, which is the blinding effect. And that's probably the scariest thing, because otherwise it has this, this tentacle whap thing that's just like... What is it? Like a D6? or It's like just... Yeah, it's a D6 of damage. So if you want to just average that out, they just say it's a flat 6. <laughs> um... But other than that, it it does a um, it does the you can't breathe while it's around your head thing. And in all of D and D since we started playing in three point five, the suffocation feature has never been that scary <laughs> for the player characters because it's just like they've always had it in the rule that if you're suffocating, you can quote unquote hold your breath for a number of rounds equal to like your constitution modifier whatever and it's like that's a lot that's a long time to be able to hold your breath so suffocating mm -hmm. is never really a thing unless the dm wants to go a step further and actually include methods of making you scream or you know making you not hold your breath anymore now that counter goes down a lot and now you're on um, health points so with that being said, it would be amazing to see a more tactics oriented sort of thing where it's like the dark elves are kind of darting around shooting arrows and kind of trying to get up into the rib cages of your players. And meanwhile, the dark metals are just being the most annoying buttholes like they're small and insignificant. So the players are probably just like, meh, whatever, we can just ignore them. They can't even get past our armor. Um, but the minute that they can't see... <laughs> You know, now they're taking all these now they're taking all these disadvantages and the dark elves could just like, you know, try to pinpoint it from sound or something. Um, there's a lot of or pair the dark mantle with a with a more intelligent creature that has um, a sense of smell or tremor sense or something. And now you've got a really scary encounter that's using, you know, this relatively weak and I would consider stupid creature. Um, and you have, you also have this cool little, like, underground, um, 
environment ecosystem sort of thing so it's like these two creatures are actually working together to kind of get a meal out <laughs> sort of thing mm -hmm. so it's not so much a dark elf thing but more like a what's it called a cohabitation symbiotic hunting yeah. tactics something like that <laughs> anyways that's symbiotic. <laughs> anyway, that's my that's my two cents about how i would i would look at the dark mantle because Again, the the Underdark is supposed to be like this, to, to a game standpoint, it's supposed to be like this high-level area, because like everything in there is like supposed to be able to kill you in some way. Whereas the Dark Mantle exists down there, but it does so much of nothing. <laughs> it's just like, alright, I mean, unless I was, unless I'm a part of that one campaign in which I'm, I was tied up and my armor is gone and I don't have my component pouch for spells and stuff then that could be kind of scary because now i'm it's just pure dexterity for defense and the dark mantle is just on my head <laughs> and i don't remember if we talked about this on screen but uh i think uh i ran a campaign uh where they were underground and i don't think i threw dark mantles at them but i think it, like it was in the underdark and i think it would have been uh they didn't have their usual uh supplies and magical things and i thought it would be cool if they want if like they had to like scrounge up supplies so like if they needed the darkness spell or uh night vision kind of spell and stuff they would like that would be like a let's skin a dark mantle if we can find one and we like can harvest it for its bits then we can use it for stuff and like it'd be kind of cool if you could preserve those elements of it of just like oh yeah like it can give you limited flight for a little bit or it could um you could like push the sack for a second to release darkness so that you could escape for a moment like i think there's like a lot of neat things yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like in the same way that like i think it feels very animal like um, and like low level animals, like this isn't an issue, but at the same time, like dogs, you don't think are an issue, but when, like when, when it's coupled with like, okay, we'll stick the attack dogs in them. And once they're like worried about the attack dogs biting their legs, that's when we'll start shooting people. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and this is exactly that scenario of like, I think if I were to be really mean and set up a, uh, an area, I would have, I'd have like, um, shin level like guillotine like things or spikes on the floor so that like the the dark mantles know that they just start attack stuff and then things just start whacking them in the legs oh. and so once it falls and they're like hey, it's cool like and i think that would be a <laughs> shitty scenario um as you were starting that thought the i was i was uh i was thinking in my head that um it would be cool if your characters are kind of stuck in the underground for an extended period of time, like in that campaign, for example. Like they're not really on a time clock, right? Not in that one, no. So if they have a lot of downtime, they could just start like collecting dark mantles that might try to harass them, just like in like a gross bone cage or something. And then if they have downtime, they're intelligent creatures. So according to the description they could train them to be guardians and stuff, so they could just eventually have just this, like, cage of dark mantle that they just, like, throw at their enemies as, like, smoke screens. So it's just, like, <laughs> dark mantle, and they're just like, ah, it's just, just and then just, okay, run away. <laughs> it would be good seeing that, like, uh, it's made to combat underground or like uh underdark denison so like in this scenario of like ah dro well how do you like being blind down here bitch <laughs> yeah if if my if i had a campaign that totally just threw like legions of drow at my players i'd totally give them the option to just have a basket of dark mantle like they don't even have to be trained like if you just have a basket of dark mantle and you take one and you throw it like they're gonna like they're at the well they are monstrosities but they are still relatively animalistic so they would panic and they would just ink well dark yeah. aura <laughs> they would darkness mm -hmm. um and that would be an amazing uh, i would totally think of that as a player too i'd be like uh dm can i 
fashion a bag that would hold maybe three of these things. <laughs> um, the hardest thing, though, would be finding them. Like, they would try to harass you, and then you have to try to tell your party, don't one-shot them. Well, I think one of the worst things HP. is that everybody, like, tries to, like, when they attack, and they're like, it's got my head. I'm like, all right. Uh, and this happens, like, the, the couple times that I've fought them, too. Like, the DM didn't handle it well, in my opinion. But they did it like, it's got your head engulfed. So, like, I was like, well, I just, like, I slipped my dagger up, and then I cut <laughs> it off. And they're like, well, make the attack roll. It's like, it's, it's, it's right here. That is. <laughs> that, that, like, you do such a bad job of explaining why that's a complicated thing, uh, like, wrestling with something and doing it safely so you don't cut yourself in the face. But, like, it is like a, it's on me. Well, I, it, it's like a, it's the size of a dog. I, I wrestle it into place and we stuff it in the barrel. <laughs> like, if I was, yeah, I mean, if, if I was DMing that, if I was DMing that situation, I'd be like, well, I mean, it does have like tendrils that is trying to keep your limbs away from it. <laughs> so there is a little bit of resistance. Like it's not going to be a disadvantage necessarily because you know where it is. You're not trying to attack something else, but you still got to, you still got to try to get rid of its dexterity defense <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah so that was the dark mantle <laughs> um some good ideas for the players and the dms some good attempts you were saying that you were so disappointed in this thing and i thought i did a pretty damn good job and you still managed to do something two times better than, than what I ended up doing. So. What I was mad at was technology. <laughs> that uh, I okay. switched over to a different system. I spent an hour and a half playing with brushes, and I could like I, I'm gonna Google this later. I need to find out um, if they're like all I need is I need a pressure sensitivity that matches the way that I work because I want it to be small when I do super light pressure and I want it to be larger when I like tilt it sideways. And I want to still be able to like, I want to be like, I don't know. It was really weird where I was like doing like super light marks and it like did no marks at all. But then I would barely start to put pressure and all of a sudden it do like a dark mark. So like it was just screwing around with settings just so I could have something that felt like a pencil. Uh, and then like once it exported, it just didn't, it exported it like, I think it was only two minutes and I spent like an hour, hour and a half working on it. I was like, oh, now I need to slow this down. Great. <laughs> Copy. Great. Why did I even do this? And now I, so I need to check the settings to see if I can change the rate that it records at. Like maybe I just need to get an external recording thing. But I don't know. It seems more work, work than it's worth but to, to change. But I know a bunch of benefits on why Procreate is a good program. So I need to just like rip the band-aid off, <laughs> cope with it. The very least it's beneficial to be aware of multiple programs. So just in case if one situation demands you use this one, it's like, okay. <laughs> Instead of like, I've never used it before. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I allow my students when I teach them for the most part to to use whatever program that they want when we come to certain projects. And a lot of them do use Procreate. And I, I don't want to be like, oh yeah, I have no clue about that. Have fun. Like, that's, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good teacher in my mind. So some experience helps. All right. So that does it for the dark mantle. Moving on through, unless there is um, raucous upcry from mostly even. Oh, <laughs> burps. Um, the next stop is the Death Knight. <clears throat> oh, I forgot about the Death Dog. Do we want to do the Death Dog? We could do the Death Dog. Can I put forward Get a Death with the Knight Lich. with the Death Dog? Death I mean, that's death like dog? extra right. work for you a little bit more than it is for me, but... We'll see. I kind of have an idea in my head that it's can... like I don't have anything in my head for like a dog, like in particular, where that I'm like, yes, this can be its own thing. Mm -hmm. But in the same way that like a death knight 
like and i i don't know the history on this one but this specific death knight art is used a lot and so i think this is like a very particular reference yeah uh, but other than that it's just like it's an undead knight like that's basic same with a dog with an extra head yeah i want to say i want to say that this not this artwork like it was maybe like a different angle or something but this style this depiction was in 3.5 i think like he might have had a different slightly different helmet but i i remember being very buckety yeah and... no i think like three or four of the same um like outfit like different different artists hands different like scenes like i don't know what's special about this dude and maybe we'll find yeah, out. And I'll be, love it, it might be a very specific Death Knight. Like, he might actually have a name that he's just like, yeah, he's because of the nature of Death Knight, he just keeps coming back. Like, they, there has been no players that have been able to satiate why he became a Death Knight, so he just keeps coming back. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, Google D&D Death Knight, and you'll find out why they're really annoying. <laughs> um... <laughs> So yeah, um, Death Knight plus Death Dog. Is it called a Death Dog? Am I call it Dread Dog? Something, something with a D. D. <laughs> Dread. Dread. Dog. Death. Dog. No way. That's wrong. <laughs> Hellhound. Wait, no, that's H. Hellhound's definitely a different one. <laughs> All right, so thank you for tuning in for this week. Um, we hope we didn't disappoint, and tune in next week for something with more d's <laughs> this has been fun and that has been even so tune in next time bye bye